Hi everybody, BS Outdoors here. So it's the end of season. You done sent all your furs to market. Um, you have some of the prized ones left over. You don't exactly know what you got, want to do with them. Well, we're here at Prado's Trading Post. Let's see if he'll walk us through kind of how to get all our stuff from a dry good to a tanned hide. Hey Aaron, how's it going? Not too bad, back in here again. Heard you got some uh, dried goods and yep. figured to see if you could show us how to turn them into a tanned hide. Yeah, so I'm still trying to catch up from last year. I got at least two more batches to get done uh, for myself for hats in here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna show you exactly every chemical that I'm using, but I will show you step by step why it costs the, as much as it does going through these tanning process, why it might take uh, a long time to get your stuff back in the mail and what you know good practices here are so I'm going to give you a, a little rundown we definitely need salt there's no almost no kind of tanning you can do without some form of salt um, we got a barrel full of just some regular old tap water we have a few uh, other things up here we're going to be mixing into it but yeah we're going to get this uh, get this going here and then we're gonna, I'll show you uh, these fox over here and we will, we will get a good little look over of that and those will go in this rehydrate and then you'll follow the process from there. So, a little more light up in here. So it's a good idea to weigh everything. If you're not weighing, you don't really know and it could lead to problems as I've found out in the past. So I'm adding uh, a little bit of this. I think uh, most of you are probably familiar with it. There is, uh, it's just your regular old alum. And I know some people are saying, well, yeah, people can tan just with alum, but I prefer an acid pickle. Uh, but in this video here, we're putting a little bit into it to rehydrate, kind of tighten up that, those pores and that skin. And, uh, get that process started. We don't want to lose hair. That's the biggest thing about this is we sure don't want to lose any hair off of any of these hides. Yeah, that sure would be a pain losing losing something that any of us enjoy catching and yep. it so, go go down the drain. This isn't quite as scientific. So we're gonna need about 25 pounds of salt with about half a bag. And then uh, we're gonna mix this up and I will show you how we make sure whether there is or is not enough salt in here once we're done mixing. You use just about anything to stir, uh, two by four, boat four. <laughs> um, we, I got a piece of PVC and small batches, four, four gallon buckets or so. I will just mix with just a stick of PVC. If you use PVC, put an elbow on the top end that you're holding onto, because if you don't, and you start sloshing that PVC down in there, it's gonna squirt right up through that PVC in your face. And it's not fun to have a salty, a salty solution. Uh, the chemicals that are in it, you're definitely gonna have some eye irritations. Sounds like you kind of know that from experience. Yep, I've uh, had this stuff in my eyes. I've had it splashed in my mouth. It is, uh, it is nasty. It's sour. It tastes sour. If anybody wants to know what this stuff tastes like, it's just sour. So how'd you get into like the tanning portion of it all? I mean, did you just watch YouTube or? Yeah, so prices were way down, way down back in uh, 2008, somewhere around there. Uh, and so a friend of mine called me up and said, hey, uh, I got a coyote, you wanna come over? I bought a kit, let's try and tan it. And I said, okay, well, I'm coming over. That sounded like a good idea. So went over there, read the directions, uh, had the coyote fleshed out, shoved it in a solution, it wasn't quite as much of a process as this is now. Uh, as 
I've gotten better and better. You know, there's more more steps to the work and things like that. But uh, yeah, got got that coyote tan in a five gallon bucket in the laundry room of his house, and uh, it just was really amazing that you can take something uh, that was there was some fur out there, you know, and just put it in that solution and pull it out and do a few steps with it. The next thing you know, you got something nice to hang on your wall and you did it all yourself. Uh, once you showed me how to do that, it was kind of, I didn't really do anything with it for a while. It just kind of went things in the back of my head that I thought was cool. And and then uh, I decided I had enough fur, uh, prices were way down, I was going to tan some myself. So I got, I got some fur and bought some tanning kits and started tanning at home. And then uh, I just progressed from there. I had too, so much tan fur sitting at home, I had to do something with it. Started making hats. I uh, always wanted a red fox hat, made one for myself and that's where it's been going ever since. So this here. This here is a salometer. We're going to test and see. We've got to make sure there's enough salt in the water here. So we are sitting at about 42%. So my exacto measuring as I was dumping it out of the bag is right on track. So now uh, we're going to add in some other things here. There's so many different brands. So many different kinds of ways to do it, but everyone ends up having a favorite. This is my favorite rehydrating solution. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of details about this kind of thing because uh, stuff like this should be, you should follow all the safety precautions. You should probably have somebody that knows what they're doing uh, train you on how to use it. You don't want to splash this stuff definitely up on you. Uh, I have no idea what the actual compounds are in it, but I do know it just it just really works. So we're going to measure this out here on the scale. Get that going here. Let's see, almost. So when you're doing this, there's there's a few products you need to be very picky on the amount you put in because it. It could ruin, ruin hide or. Yep. So you got to make sure your salt is right. Like I said bad experience. Uh, alum, but we're not doing an alum tan. We're not even tanning yet. We're just going to get the hide softened up with this. So we're we're going to do an, we're going to do an acid tan later. Uh, some people I've heard use battery acid. Some people I've heard use just all, all kinds of different products. There's a lot of different commercial products out there. Uh, like I said, just be safe with what you're doing. Read the labels, follow codes, do all that sort of thing, and wear the proper PPE. I'm uh, about half the line, so I already got my safety glasses on full time. And uh, yeah, we got got my gloves going on here. I know you can probably see my flip flops and you're thinking that guy ain't wearing boots. I'm going to tell you what happened. I fell off a hoverboard yesterday and my ankle swelled up and my kids laughed at me. And <laughs> so that's that's kind of where I'm at right now. I, I'm wearing the flip flops because I can't get a shoe on. Sounds like you had a nice trip yesterday. It was it was a horrible trip. <laughs> so now we got that in there. We're coming back over. We're gonna zero zero her out. The uh, McKenzie odor eliminator. Since we're doing red fox, there's some animals that do not need odor remover on. Um, a lot of raccoons, you don't really need odor remover on. Beaver, I don't see a huge need for it. Coyote, they have a doggy smell. Fox, they have a little bit of a skunky smell. Uh, things like that. So on, on those sort of things, I will definitely use an odor, an odor eliminator to be able to solve that problem. Um, sometimes you may need to give it a couple baths in it or you may need to strengthen it up a little bit. Most times, just follow the directions. 
you'll be good to go. And try not to drop your bowl in it or you yeah. melt. Good thing it didn't sink. I, I don't got a long enough arm to get down in there. <laughs> Rinse off your stuff. It doesn't give you false readings uh, the next time you go to use it. So we're going to get one more little mix. And I'm going to go over the heights and a little bit about what we're looking at over there. So. And when you're tanning for somebody, do you prefer trap dried, salted? How do you how do you prefer so your hides? I can actually save a step if they just bring them in green. So if you flush them, freeze them, bring them in, it'll actually save me a step in the process uh, with building the rehydrate to get these uh, to get these dry goods back to where they need to be to start the tanning process. So you can see here. Fox get tan, or fox get, uh, sorry, fox get stretched first side out. So we're looking here, you can see it's nice and dry. There's not a lot of membrane, not a lot of fat in here and stuff. There's a little bit. Um, because this is from last year, you must, you got to be really careful about fur bugs. You can see how clean that is all the way down. Yeah, someone so, knew what they were doing, that's for sure. Yeah, so that looks really, really good. Here's one here not quite as great you can see it had a lot more membrane stuff like that this one might take a little bit longer to rehydrate with all this excess on here uh we got some gray foxes mixed in a little see it's up in there's grainy some borax up in there that's a common thing to do uh, especially ears tails stuff like that now what we're going to do is we're just going to take these and we're going to submerge them in the solution and once they're all submerged in that solution, they'll remain in there overnight and they'll be checked uh, twice a day for the next couple of days. And once they are soft enough and the skins have plumped back to their uh, original form, we'll be able to take them and move them on to the next step. And that'll be, that'll be the next video is checking checking the skins and uh, putting them in the acid so in a th in a, I got about 25 gallons of water in here that, that's why I use 25 pounds of salt approximately half that 50 pound bag you need a pound of salt per gallon of water it's pretty typical of just about any kind of tan so we'll get I said we'll get all these in here uh, I hope you all, you know, be able to learn something. Um, the only reason I'm not showing you all the chemicals and all the whole process involved is because of the safety factors, what we're using here today. I just don't want anybody to just run out and just start grabbing stuff and uh, not quite be trained on it, you know, exactly what, what they're doing without having somebody to show them. We're just going to shove these down in there nice and easy. If you're not easy with them, they'll split, they'll break. You don't want any of that. We just got to be gentle, uh, tamping them around in here a little bit. And we're going to put a lid on it overnight. We'll check them a couple of times, more times tomorrow. And we're going to go from there. So stay tuned for some more BS outdoors. Thank you guys. Like I said, uh, there will be more steps to this. We are going to show you exactly how to get a dry good to a tan fur. That way you can figure out what you want to do with it after that. You know, uh, if you want to make a wall hanger out of it, make a hat out of it, anything like that. But if you do want to make anything like that, check out Prada's Trading Post. He does an amazing job on everything and he would be more than happy to do your work.